So, the Eagles decided to play for the tie on Sunday. Interesting. Herm Edwards yelled so loudly at that decision that you could hear his screams all the way in Tucson. Now normally, teams don't like tying games, and they will do anything possible to avoid a tie. Just look at the Colts two years ago, who instead of punting it away, went for it on 4th and 4 in their own territory with less than 30 seconds left. A punt would have resulted in a tie for sure. They went for it though. Now it didn't work out, but most people could respect what Frank Reich tried to do there and the confidence he had in his own players. And heck, many people viewed that as the rallying point for the Colts turning around their season and making the postseason that year. It's not too often that you see coaches content to play for a tie. But in a 1969 game between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Houston Oilers, that's exactly what happened. And it ended up backfiring in a big way. And this is the story behind that. First, we need a bit of context behind this game. It's November 9th, 1969, and the Houston Oilers are playing the Cincinnati Bengals at the Astrodome in this late season American Football League matchup. Now back in 1969, the playoff structure in the AFL was simple. The top two teams in each of the five team divisions made it to the postseason. If you didn't finish in first or second, you were going home. For Houston, they should comfortably make the playoffs, as the AFL East is just atrocious. While the Oilers are not a good team, as they're 4-4 four four with a negative point differential, the Bills are in third at 2-6, the Dolphins are in fourth at 1-6-1, and, and the Patriots are in fifth at 1-7. It's kind of like in baseball how the AL West was this year. Someone has to finish second by default. Cincinnati isn't so fortunate. While they are also sitting at 4-4, the AFL West is a dogfight. Yes, the team in Cincinnati was in the West while the team in Houston was in the East. No, it does not make any sense. The Bengals were sitting dead last in their division. San Diego and Denver own tiebreakers over them at 4-4. The Raiders are in second at 6-1-1, and the Chiefs are in first at 7-1. And as it turns out, the Chiefs and the Raiders would win their games on November 9th, meaning that the Bengals would be three games back with five to play if they did not win this game. So for Cincinnati, this is a must win, especially since back then, tie games did not impact the standings at all. Your winning percentage was not impacted one bit if the game ended in a tie. It was almost as if the game never happened. Keep all of that in mind, because with that context, it makes the decision that much crazier. This game was the definition of a back and forth battle. Cincinnati scored first on a 44 yard touchdown catch by Bob Trumpy. Then the Oilers tied it in the second. Cincinnati scored again on a 70 yard touchdown catch by Trumpy, only for the Oilers to tie it again. It was 14 all at the half. Greg Cook threw his third touchdown pass of the game, this one being a 70 yard strike to Eric Crabtree. Then the Oilers tied it again. And in the fourth, Trumpy caught his third touchdown of the day, only for the Oilers to, you guessed it, tie it again. Cincinnati took the lead four times, and Houston immediately responded all four times. And late in the fourth, Houston got their first lead of the game, as Rigorella hit a 50 yard field goal to make it 31 28. Then Cincinnati, with one last shot at it, drove down the field. With 22 seconds left, they faced a 4th and 5 on the 11-yard line. Remember that games did not go into overtime back then. The game was on the line here. And the Bengals decide to line up for the field goal. Horst Wallman hits the 18-yarder and the game ends in a 31-all tie. I want to emphasize just how dumb this decision was this late in the season. If the Bengals got the 4th down and scored a touchdown, they win the game and they're two back with five to play. If the Bengals don't get it and fail to pick up the fourth down, they're three back with five to play. If they kick the field goal like they did here, guess what? They're three back with five to play. Based on how the standings worked back then, there was no incentive whatsoever to kick the field goal here. There was no reason for the Bengals to play for the tie. Not when the Oilers, who had tons of cushion because of how bad their division was, were probably more than content to let Cincinnati tie it up and not impact their winning percentage but head coach Paul Brown defended his decision after the game. He said that this is a young football team and that his guys fought hard enough to deserve a tie. He said, I wasn't about to mess up a good afternoon's efforts on one play. I went for the field goal and I'd do it again. So in other words, he went for the tie to boost morale. That seems kind of backwards because normally it'd be the opposite, but whatever, did this move pay off? Did the team's morale increase and did they rally behind Paul Brown to make a fantastic fight to the finish with five to play. Of course not, they lost every game after that. Yes, the Bengals wound up losing their final five games to finish the season with a 4-9-1 record, which was dead last in the AFL West. 
and was tied for the second fewest wins of any team in the league, they completely collapsed down the stretch. After starting the season 3-0, they won just one of their final 11 games. It's safe to say that the strategy did not work out. So when Herm Edwards says you play to win the game, keep that in mind. Because if you don't, you could wind up like the 1969 Bengals, who didn't take this advice and wound up having nothing to show for it. Be sure to check out Twitch every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.